women as a whole are seen as possessions throughout the novel, and this is part of the reason that uh, Tom Buchanan doesn't like Jordan Baker, because in a sense she refuses to be uh, another man's possession. The reason I want to do this part about Myrtle is because it really speaks to the power of language, and, and Fitzgerald is a master of the English language. I mean, if you really want to understand what it means to write beautiful English prose, American English, there's really uh, few people who do it better than F. Scott Fitzgerald and The Great Gatsby. This is really a, a, a well-written novel that pays attention to the beauty of language and the power of language to convey meaning just in a single word. Just one word. And I'll give you an example. This is where Tom, Nick, and uh, Myrtle are all going into New York City. I think it's cute, said Mrs. Wilson enthusiastically. How much is it? That dog? He looked at it admiringly. That dog will cost you ten dollars. The Arendelle, undoubtedly there was an Arendelle concerned in it somewhere, though its feet were startlingly white, changed hands and settled down into Mrs. Wilson's lap, where she followed the weatherproof coat with, with rapture. Is it a boy or a girl? she asked uh, delicately. That dog? That dog's a boy. It's a bitch, said Tom decisively. What just happened that's important? Alright, so there's an exchange between Myrtle and the vendor. Myrtle is asking the vendor, is the dog a boy or is the dog a girl? Now, who is going to know better than anybody if the dog is a boy or a girl? Certainly the person selling the dog is going to know if the dog is a boy or a girl. But then Tom, he asserts himself into the conversation. Now, Myrtle asks the question, the vendor answers, that dog's a boy. What does Tom say? Why does Tom say that? What is, what is Fitzgerald, how is Fitzgerald using language to tell us something important about how Tom thinks about women? Who paid for the dog? So, <clears throat> the vendor says it's a boy dog. Tom pays for the dog, so then it becomes a bitch. So what is Tom saying about his relationship to women? He buys them. They are possessions. Tom Buchanan thinks of women as possessions that he buys. Well, remember we talked about Tom Buchanan and one of his uh, sort of dominant characteristics is he likes to control other people. Now think about this. Do you think it's an accident that Myrtle is not from the same social class as Tom? You think that's an accident? No. No. Why not? Why, why does it benefit Tom that Myrtle is, is like a sheep from animal farm. What does he have over her? Control. He has more control. Because she's from a lower social class. And we've already, we've already said, we've already shown how uh, one of these conspicuous characteristics of Tom is he likes to control other people. And it's much easier to control someone from a lower social class. Again, this is why he dislikes Jordan Baker, because he can't control her. Now, that's uh, further supported by, the, by his action toward Myrtle in the apartment. Daisy, 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 shouted Mrs. Wilson. I'll say it whenever I want to. Daisy, Day, making a short deaf movement, Tom Buchanan broke her nose with his open hand. 
See, he broke her nose because he could. He broke her nose because he doesn't regard her as a person, he regards her as a possession. So it just reinforces the exchange between Myrtle, Vendor, and Tom about the dog. The vendor knows that the dog is a boy. He's not confused about the dog that he is selling. He's not mistaken. But Tom is making a statement about money and women. He paid for it, so it must be a female. Because that's what he does with the females in his life. After all, how did he get Daisy? He had enough money. You're just going to tell me he accidentally chose the word bitch? That it has no significance whatsoever? The reason I think it, it has d deeper significance that sort of resonates throughout the rest of the text it is because you can see how he treats Myrtle later on. Okay, so let's read a passage. This is before they go off to New York City. And this is uh, Nick Carraway. So listen to how Nick describes Tom's state of mind as they're about to go off to New York City. Now, this is at the situation where Tom is aware that he is losing Daisy to Gatsby. And Tom just found out, who is he also losing? He's losing Myrtle because George Wilson is going to move away. And he's going to take Myrtle with him. So listen to Nick Carraway's description of Tom Buchanan's state of mind. There's no confusion like the confusion of a simple mind. And as we drove away, Tom was feeling the hot whips of panic. His wife and his mistress, and until an hour ago secure and inviolate, were slipping precipitately from his control. So from that description of Nick Carraway about Tom's state of mind, Realizing that, that Daisy's slipping from his control because of Gatsby and that George Wilson is about to take his wife away, how do you think he sees women? Does he see women as people or possessions? So see, when you, when you put all these things together, the, the way that he sort of breaks Myrtle's nose, because he can, and his state of mind described by Nick Carraway, and then this whole incident with the dog, they reinforce one another, and they lead you to conclude that, no, Fitzgerald isn't just arbitrarily or randomly using words. He's choosing words with a purpose. He has meaning and significance in mind, even when he uses just one simple word. I mean, what other reason would Tom Buchanan have for changing the sex of the dog from a boy to a girl? What would be the purpose? What would be the point of doing that? Because Fitzgerald is trying to show us something about how Tom understands the world, how Tom understands his relationship to him.